Never. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Love that movie. Yes. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Me and Eric are just... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Banana sorry. Finds and... Banana the Finds Picker. and The Nameless Picker. Eric <laughs> My bad. He finally got a name. We figured on nameless because no one could think of anything. <laughs> and it actually, Jason actually has a reference for nameless. It goes back to one of his uh, games he used to play as a child. So it actually works out. There, there is some meaning behind it as well. But great, yeah. your life, your life is based on my childhood. That's all. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but we are live once again, bringing to you another. Well, this is actually the great. first one. All right, slow down there, Wolfman Jack. <laughs> this is my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it calm and monotone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're here to show you another. I'm just kidding. Online auction purchase. Yeah, so me and Eric were shopping together, apparently, because that's what we do now. Uh, apparently, we do. And the good thing is, I'm actually meeting up with him next week so we can actually exchange all the stuff we've been buying for each other. So, yeah, so that works. So, yeah, we were, you know, combing a uh, online auction uh, thing. There were like 800-something lots. It was a pretty big one. And yeah, it was unusual. You don't – because this, this is uh, – you bought from this company before. And it, was actually, yeah. and it was actually really good. This company has really good online auctions because uh, not all the on, not all online auctions are good. A lot of them are, for the most part, people just – they're basically online garage sales. Uh, the last time I dealt with this company was the a live auction that was the, all that leather working equipment out of that old yeah. uh, business, and I ended up buying like a quarter of the auction. It was like insane. Yeah, and you, and you really didn't spend that much money. I mean, you made a ton of money off of that. I think uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't think it was more than five grand. I, th I think that's about right where you're at was like five grand, but I know you've made yeah. twenty to twenty five off of that auction. So I mean, it was good. Yeah, that was remember that was the one with the candy machines, the antique candy machines. Oh, we had the candy machines, and I remember all the leather, the, the high end leather tools where you were selling leather stamps for twenty to twenty five dollars a piece. I mean, and you bought a cabinet that had like a hundred of them in there, so it was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's right. It's all coming back to me now. How that was like almost over a year. Yeah. Yeah, because you had that stuff when I was there. You still had you well. You still have some of the some of the, you still have some of that stuff left over because some of it's just hard to sell. But um, yeah, it's been probably about a year and a half. Not so much hard to sell. It's just in the back room because I haven't gotten to it. Well, yeah, but some of you can't identify some of the bigger clicker dies and things. So things and all that. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah. It's more like not taking the time to do the research because there's so much other stuff coming through the pipe. It keeps getting pushed back. There's actually a truck, a whole pickup bed worth of those things still. <laughs> so. I'll eventually have to work on that stuff. Yep. Oh, but anyway, you were saying we'd be. Uh... Well, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll be up next week. I mean, I'm going to meet up with Jason. We're going to hang out for a day or two and then uh, maybe hit a state sale or a flea market or even an auction. I mean, not a whole lot because, I mean, quite frankly, we've been buying so much lately that, you know, we got to sell it, you know, <laughs> as well. I mean, we're all, we're pretty dang busy. I mean, and, and actually, probably Friday, we're going to be hanging out and just, you know, maybe working on stuff in Jason's uh, shop. So. Yeah, man, I'm gonna be. You're gonna be like my photo biatch. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the photo bitch. That's for certain. So. <laughs> I mean, jeez, I got. Yeah, so yeah. So for once, Jason will actually have photos. He won't have to actually go back and correct because I'll take them right the first time. So. Uh. Oh, stop. <laughs> Why that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we spent like a grand total of uh, fourteen thirty. Fourteen thirty between the both of us. Um, I spent like uh, one hundred and thirty bucks. Jason spent the rest. Um, but it, we weren't buying single items. A lot of stuff wasn't just single item stuff. A lot of it was lots of stuff. So I mean, that's when that's the best way to buy is when you get bundled stuff. When you buy four or five, six things in a, in a lot, and it turns out to be, you know, you, you spend thirty dollars on a lot, and you, and you make two or three hundred dollars off of it because you said we're able to sell five things. So yeah, I mean. You know, it works out. This was a weird pickup that it was in a, like a warehouse type building. And uh, I don't know, something about the elevator was broken. It was three floors or something. So they just, what they did is I, I literally just pulled up on the curb and they uh, 
handed me boxes out the back door, <laughs> which was actually kind of neat. So I didn't have to do that much labor. So, but I, I but I didn't really look at anything, so I don't even remember what what's here. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't even seen it. I, I've, we went to the auction, and and again, we're looking at pictures, and and pictures don't always tell the story. I mean, even, and they were even giving uh, Jason some free stuff as well. You know, obviously stuff that they just had laying around didn't think had any value, and they really gave a lot of money away. So, yeah, it was neat. It's always so, fun. Yep. So let's further ado. Let's let's spin the uh, monitor around and get set up, and let's spin the old monitor. Make sure you got you're focused on you on uh, oh right around you, so it doesn't switch over to me. There we go. So Dusty, Dusty might join us later. I don't know. He was he was tied up. Um, that he was trying to get free, but we'll see. No guarantees on that. You gonna start with the big boy? How's the? We'll, yeah, we'll start with the big boy. Yeah, that works. This was one of those crazy J purchases. This is the crazy J person purchase that he was like, I bought that. I'm like, no, you didn't, you dang liar. He's like, no, I did. I said, no, you. There's no way you bought that. And he's like, yes, I did. And then he finally convinced me he did. So, yeah. I, I you know, top prize. To, I don't know. I, I'm not looking at the YouTube. I've got the pot, the chat going up, but I don't know anybody that's. I don't know how many people are watching. We could have like three people watching. Anybody know what it is? Because I certainly didn't. That's a long enough pause. Okay, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a hat. What's it called again? Conformator. Uh, conformator. A hat conformator. Yeah. Um, that it's got a patent date on it, uh, patent pending date, which so it means it was applied for, wasn't granted at the, at the time they made this, of 1869. And what it is is how you make it. If you basically you walk into a hat maker shop and you slip it on your head and they would do all the adjustments and they would have your exact size for, for fitting to your head. Um, very interesting. It's may not, we're still trying to find the, the patent on it because it's very difficult. Um, uh, trying to find out, we think there might be a piece missing on the top, but we're not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure it's missing a piece. We're pretty sure because all the other ones we see online are like this, but those are later, those are 1890s the ones we've been seeing online. Um, if you guys oh. haven't come across these things and they're cheap enough, you should buy them because these things are crazy expensive. Um, Jason's tips. You know, this one's not in the best of shape, but the unique thing about it, and the reason I bought it, is I could not find one that had the beautiful scroll work on the, the side support pillars there. Yeah, and we have, it hasn't cleaned it up yet, so, I mean, where all that dust is, it's actually really nice, probably ebony wood, um, because it looks very dark. Yeah, I won't know until I clean it, though. It might not be. Um, it's ebony is a very heavy wood, and it's not very heavy. So I don't oh, okay. Care. So maybe just it just maybe I mean just be careful when you clean it because it just might be that aged oak wood. Um, yeah, I'm not going to clean it any further than just dusting off the wood a little. Yeah, but uh, prices on these things, the ones we've been able to find, we have this is a made in America piece. Uh, the only ones we've really been able to find are made in uh, France, and they're anywhere from a thousand to thirty-five hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, it's it's almost impossible to get a price on it. I mean, yeah, this. I mean, I even scoured the web. I could not find any with this type of uh, scroll work or anything. So, this constituted half of, half of Jason's auction, auction purchase. Yeah. So this was six hundred and fifty dollars to buy it, but. Um, it was just I, so unique. I love unique stuff. You know, it's it's a unique piece, and the potential for value is huge. Yeah, so, I mean that's that's what that's. I mean, again, not everybody can step up and pay that much money. I would not have bought it because it would have been more than I was willing to pay. Um, but I, 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 if I had the money laying around, which I've bought stupid expensive things before, you can look at my videos and see. Um, but. Yeah, I, I just, I didn't know. I hadn't done any of the research on it, so. So, a really cool piece, but like I said, if you see weird things like this, sometimes, and the weirdest stuff is worth the most, so. I'm going to put you it see. in the back room a minute so I don't break it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah that's that's a really unique piece, and like I said, it was, it's a, it's a hat uh, informator. It's actually made to measure your head so that the hat maker can... Can give you an exact fit 
and it, it basically fits on and it, it pulls out and it gets an exact measurement. So if your head's not, you know, completely mm -hmm. round like mine, you know, you got a little pointy head or something. Next we have, this was a, a freebie the guy tossed in. Toss in this box. You remember, remember the movie Polyester with Divine and it's a John Waters film. Very weird guy, John Waters. These are the Odorama scratch and sniff cards. Um, there's, you said there's 10 cards there? 10 cards, yep. 10 cards, they sell for $10 a piece. And so, we got a whole box of, I don't know, it says 100, but we'll see. 3D glasses, the real, like, 50s kind where they just clip on their, their paper with a little metal wire and they clip on your nose. <laughs> yeah, so those are, and those are uh, about $3 a piece. How they work out. So, I mean, the guy just basically handed Jason $400. It's because so, I mean, I'm charming. And I talk well, a lot of it is because if, if you're the type of person that steps up and, and buys a lot at auction, you'd be surprised how many times you'll get something for free at an auction. You don't, buddy. Wait now I bought some. I bought, I bought quite a bit of stuff at this auction, but I didn't spend a lot of money. I just bought big, big lots. Yes, thank you, Harry. Are you gonna get in here, Dusty, or not? We sent you the link. So, all right. So this is the I'm trying to find these lots. But this is a Stanley router, right? Yeah, Stanley router. Okay, so in this lot was a Stanley router, a Black and Decker router, a Rockwell router, and a Guide Mate, if I remember correctly. They're going to be mixed up a bit because they, they kind of like packed these and they brought them out to me, so I didn't pack them. So here's a nice, genuine cherry stair, uh, stair, Stanley uh, level. Those are good. Those, I mean, they're not great, but collectors like, they do collect levels. So. We got a little Black & Decker. Hand oh. You know, I thought this was a sander in the picture. It's actually better. It's a planer. Okay. So that's neat. And again, tools are Jason's, uh, you know, bread and butter. I mean, you sell them all day long. Yeah. It, it, and these are... What what's the, the 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 jewel of the lot right here is this black and there is the router right? Yeah, I mean these aren't like highly expensive pieces. Like, you know, there these are probably you know like this one needs some cord attention, but people will fix that no problem. But you know these these aren't super expensive, maybe twenty, twenty five, thirty, no more than that I would think for each one. Okay. You know, not super expensive, but we didn't pay a lot for these. No. Well, that's kind of the goal. I mean, that's why you buy it in, in a large lot. So, yeah, here's like a little Cummings uh, old school drill. This is neat. And there's a lot of guys that will take those drills, especially the the uh, aluminum ones, and they will polish the heck out of them, and get them shining really nice, and just keep them as display tools. That drill is probably ten to twenty. There's a lot of stuff here, so I'm just gonna spitball price. Yeah. This here is nice uh, port cable. Port cable. A little saber saw. Uh, or, yeah, scroll saw, whatever you want to call it. It's number 7549 HD. It's actually pretty good. Porter cable is a pretty good brand. Yeah. I don't know why there's tape on it because it's doing something. But I'll get that off there. Then we got a Makita charger and two batteries. One isn't good, he said. Um, there's a Makita saw somewhere else that I'll probably call it later. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. That's a, little, a Black & Decker drill kit, isn't it? It's a little Dremel sander. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, go. nice. Again, these aren't really expensive. This is, at best, probably 20 bucks on a good day. Having the a case and the paperwork and everything is always. If it has a case and paperwork, it probably get the twenty. Oh, here's another battery. I wonder if the uh, milk crate's worth anything. Uh, I just give it to one of my friends. This is going to be a little sloppier than normal because I'm just 
I didn't really go through anything, so it's all. Yeah, you're, you're, this is the first time. I haven't seen any of this stuff myself, and I, I bought half of it, so um, it's going to be rather interesting. We, had, we haven't had a chance to get together today to do this, so. Yeah, it's going to take us a little longer than normal. Bear with us. The crazy card asks, what age do they go from just being obsolete to collectible? I don't do many old power tools. Um, well, power tools really are never obsolete. There's just levels of tools you can afford. I mean, if you think about it, a, a DeWalt 24 volt cordless drill does the same thing that a plug in Stanley drill does from 1930. I mean, what kind of, what kind of drill? I can tell you right now that, um, my father has like three or four of those Stanley routers that he uses all the time. Yeah. Oh, Stanley. Some people like collect. Power drill. Yes, yes. Mr. Wise ass. Some people collect, some people use, you know. They're all usable. Yeah, and, th and that's the key with tools. If it's in good working condition, it doesn't really make any difference, you know, the age wise. It just, you just, people always want the latest and greatest like anything else. But there's also people that, you know what? I don't trust those newfangled battery tools. You know, they always they always run out of power when I need one. And I mean, you remember back back when uh, electric or uh, battery drills first came out? Man, they couldn't you couldn't hardly do anything with them. They just didn't have the power. Yeah, especially those older power tools like you just saw the metal ones, like that Stanley. They last like forever. Like after eventually, you might have to replace the brushes and the motor or something. But which is like a ten dollar a ten dollar fix, yeah. and you're back in the in the perfect condition. So. I don't trust anything. I use an abacus. I used an abacus to do my taxes on Monday. It looked like you were using an abacus. That's what it is. I was cussing like I was using an abacus. <laughs> These are like air tool parts. I don't even know anything about this. That is... I have, um, a, I have a bunch of these. There's a big box of them. These are like for like compressors and other machines. Well, the one is a, the one is a, is a dryer, uh, a line dryer. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll check them out if they're not worth anything else. Oh, I think they're worth something. You just got to figure out what they're used for because, you know, I, I hate to say it, but Harbor Freight's really killed the value of a lot of tools. I, I got about 10 of those in the back room in a box somewhere, too. So, but somebody who's got that old school shop and wants to have that, uh, that the old school hydro, uh, air setup, they're probably so useful. So. I'm sorry, I didn't think you were doing the show because I thought he was still taking pictures and stuff and listing. <laughs> we could hear from us, and we said we're going to do the show later. That's all right. I'm in the bathtub reading the Mueller report. Uh, I knew it was in the bathroom. <laughs> all right, so here we got a pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so only Jason can go to a tool cell and come home with some computers. Absolutely. This is a beautiful vintage um, uh, 386 Zenith. Zenith, okay, yeah, 386. That's a that might even be a plasma display. Turbo Sport. Um, what did we pay? You didn't pay much for it. You paid like six bucks for that thing. Yeah, it's actually really five cool. bucks. Yeah. Paid five bucks for it, and it's probably worth a hundred, a hundred and a quarter. Can I play Fortnite on that? In this condition, I'd say it's worth a hundred. It's in good shape. Uh, the, I think they top out at about a hundred. But this one's really clean, so it's worth every cent. It's got a little disc drive on the back here. That's really kind of cool. This was like, remember last video, I think, or two videos ago, I had that Osborne luggable. Yeah. Well, this was the next step after that machine. They got to this size. Now, is this for the for for resale or for collection? This everything's for resale. What are you talking about? Okay, you're right. Is this for resale eventually? <laughs> <laughs> resale eventually? I mean, because we all do that. I mean, I know I do that. I'll, I'll grab something. I'll hang on to it, and it'll sit in my house. I've got artwork in my house that it's sitting there. It is listed, but if it doesn't sell for a while, I mean, I'm okay with that too. So. Jessica Kalinsky said, "Good answer." <laughs> <laughs> yep, I knew she'd be watching. <laughs> this is some sort of battery for uh, Minolta. Yeah, that was a. It's an auto winder. Right? Right? That's a battery and an auto winder together. So this actually pays for the lot. 
Oh, it's, easy. it's like 25 or 30 bucks. So, yeah, forgot about that. What's the model on that? It's a, the model is a Minolta BP 90M, but that's for the battery pack. Oh, is this the whole thing? Yeah, that's well, that's a pack, and, and the top piece on there is a winder. Oh, yeah, you're right. Look at that. The winder is probably $20 by itself nowadays. Sweet. Honey, I made some money. <laughs> We make a lot of money with this this lot. We're having Taco Bell tonight. <laughs> Eating good in the neighborhood. So that was a five dollar lot. Now, John, that that's actually a, a DOS machine. Yes. John, John John Jones asked if it was a CPM machine. Um, that, no, that's DOS. Yep. So actually, with a three eighty six, it could have actually even been Windows three one. Now, if I remember right, this lot was seventeen fifty. Yeah, pipe wrench lot. Yeah, it was seventeen fifty. Four pipe pipe wrenches, nine monkey wrenches, pliers, and adjustable wrench. So, uh, Mario and Luigi have nothing on me. There's an older one. What do you think it's worth? Mm -hmm. What are they worth? Not much, but for seventeen fifty, I couldn't pass it up. Especially, what's the, what's the number on the rated? This one's interesting. Well, isn't the uh, the curved one? Isn't that a Ford? The one still in the box? Uh, oh, this S one, yeah. Uh, no, it's not Ford. It's Buffalo. Okay, Buffalo. Okay, these all the time. They're not that rare. But this thing looks interesting. I don't know what this is. What is this? Some sort of nipper. No, yeah, it's an odd piece. I can't see it. Yeah, but 1750, you've got what you got uh, 13, 14, 15 tools there. I mean, even if you get 10 bucks a piece, it's a hundred and fifty dollar lot. It's called a plier inch. <laughs> I guess a plier and a wrench combination. <laughs> Interesting. So you can well, oh, we can't have anything nice around here. There's the other. <laughs> That's awesome. So now I gotta, you know, I'll pick I gotta figure out how it goes back together. Actually, it's pretty easy. I already got it. There. So it's like a combination tool. Actually, combination tools. I don't know about this one, but in general, uh, always are pretty good. You know, sometimes there'll be like a screwdriver here and like a hammerhead and. This one's really interesting. I have seen those before. Right. That's that's a different type of adjustable wrench, yeah. Yeah, this is like a larger version of a bicycle wrench. It says Shelly on it. Okay. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's the piece I like when I saw it. This is damaged. A couple more just old ones. Uh, made in England, Shelly wrenches. I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer lot because I think these bigger ones are probably like twenty bucks a pop. I would think. I don't really do plumbing stuff much, but it's a lot of metal. Um, somebody got twenty dollar twenty. I'm sorry, twenty euros for a pair of those uh, Shelly wrenches. Same one. Uh, they actually are saying they, they're part of an old Jaguar toolkit. Oh, interesting. So they are car wrenches. Um, so that could actually be decently, have some decent value. All right. Here we have. That's, that's a beast. Old Black & Decker. Okay. So yeah, pretty big one. Old school. Again, not worth much. But Still cool, though. Yeah. Try it out and cut your table in half. <laughs> so, that, so that flyer wrench apparently was a pretty pretty famous tool that 
there's a video called the most famous wrench you've never heard of. And you could actually, the two little heads of the wrenches, you could pull that, pull that little lever thing back and then you could replace that one piece. So one half of it could be replaced. Oh, neat. Okay. I guess with different grips or different whatever. This was the cool piece. This is a sure stake installing tool. Um, yeah. I don't know what that means. Did they end up having any other parts to it? Yeah, you got yeah. the controller was in another part. I got the foot pedal. It's somewhere back in there. These are really pricey. Can you say that would be about $400 for that? Yeah. <laughs> Probably something like that. These are expensive. I had... I've only had manual ones before, and they're even like a hundred or so. So it's probably a few hundred. Sure stake. Yeah, they're on cable cutters, I believe. Yeah, and I got a, a B issue. All right, be right back. Don't leave me alone. I was just gonna grab one of his lots. Do it. Let's talk about his crap while he's gone. <laughs> I think this is a mixed bag. So Eric bought a ton of these antique. Uh, this one's a waffle maker. And he also got a bunch of Pitzel makers in there, too. That's kind of cute. What is the brand on that? Oh, this even has a has some sort of temperature gauge on it. Steam. Sweet. Brand. Sorry, I, had a bee, I had a bee in here. My dog was trying to get in. Uh, don't want him stung, and I'm allergic. So, uh, dude, you should left the camera on so we could chase you. Watch the bee that you're allergic to. Yeah. No cords. Listing by underwriters. Yeah, that's nothing. Laboratories Inc. There's no other name than that. Cute. This came with the computer. This is a couple of floppy disks. Yeah, I pay I paid I bought a bunch of waffle makers and pizzelles makers. And I think I spent a grand total of like nine dollars. Wait, wait, five, eleven, thirteen dollars for all the stuff I bought. Yeah. These are all I have to go through this later. I also bought another computer, and these are all the books. And I bought an Amiga 1000. Here's like the books and stuff for it and software. Uh, all right. Uh, these look like some sort of baking tray, I guess. Maybe the, there might be a protector tray or something. It's like it's got a drip thingy or grease thingy on the one end. Oh, yeah. I probably I may go to that. Or is it too small? Too big, I mean. Open it up. What is it? It's only this. Is it power oh. maker? Damn it. That might be good. Yeah. Vintage Pacel makers are usually pretty good. At least 20 to 40 range, I would think. We have a... The Triumph... Of man. Oh, that's a, a World's Fair or World's Fair, if I remember correctly, right? Yep. Oh, neat. This it's is a record, a, right? How about eighty yeah. to hundred on that record. on that Dolce Pizzelle maker? Is it? I, I, mean, I, know it's good. I mean, there's some lower ones too. There's Eric, Eric, I think I bought that lot actually. <laughs> <laughs> I bought that 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 was that Triumph of Man was in a different lot. That was with some uh <clears throat> Like a lunch pail or anything. When we bring it out, we'll show you that. That's that was with my rate my razor stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So a pair of binoculars. Yeah, we have a pair of binoculars. They say. Uh, just trying to take the tags off for you. They say. Uh, <laughs> stellar. Who knows? Yeah. And they're stuck. Yeah, they're pretty good in there. Don't worry about it. So they're stellar. They're stellarly stuck. There we go. The stellar on the uh 
<laughs> binoculars? Let's see. It says the house of Yugo. <laughs> Superior quality made for and guaranteed by the House of Yugo. Six times 30. 393 feet to 1,000 yards. I don't see any other name on it. House of Yugo? There's a model number. Y-U-G-O? H-U-G-O. Oh, Yugo. Oh, <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> They're rare and vintage and every other weird and keyword you can figure and out. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just put steampunk in the title. Yes. Yeah. That's, what's the, now pull that out and look at that again. I, I, I'm, you should have bought this, Jason, but I bought it instead. That's okay. No, I don't care. That, is that, that should be adjustable on the bottom, right? You should be able to turn the knob on the bottom and change it. There should be numbers on the bottom. I don't see numbers. Where the handle meets the head on the underside. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's also brass at the top. Yeah. That's, uh, vintage razors are hot right now. Having the box and the, and the extra razors and everything, that's probably a forty to fifty dollar piece. I have a similar one in the back room. Uh, Throw it in the pot. Oh man! All right, I'm jealous. <laughs> I didn't okay. realize. I thought this was like an inch and a half in diameter. This, this is like five inches in diameter. Yeah, it's my Mercury switch, man. Holy that's crap! A mercury, mercury switch. Yeah. We were laughing because you know you always hear about the oh, the terrace and the mercury switches and everything. That's not what it is. But um, we looked into these things, selling brand new, selling new new old stock. These things were like one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. Well, the mercury vial is still okay, so that's good. Yeah, I don't know. I I paid seven dollars for it. I mean, I figure I'll get sixty or seventy bucks out of it. I sold a mercury. All right, and we got oh, what is this like lady chick? No, that's a regular chic electric razor, but it's, it's leather case and everything. It's really cool looking. Yeah. May not be in the best of shape, but actually, that's just tape. So, oh, so it is okay. So tape over it. Yeah, actually, it's yeah, it's pretty good shape. I give you twenty dollars if you completely shave one of your arms right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that whole the, the razors, the binoculars, that was all seven dollars. The mercury switch was seven dollars. All the Pizzell and Waffle Makers, I spent $13 on all those. And you didn't want to buy them. I kind of forced you to buy those. Well, you're, no, I wanted you to buy them for yourselves. And you're like, no. I'm like, well, fine. Just start bidding on them then, and I'll buy them. I'm like, man, they're big, and I just don't know if I want to mess with them. But I'm like, all right, I'll buy them. I had enough to buy it. Didn't I? So in other words, he could have been making Pizzell's for Jessica, but he can't, and it's your fault. That's right. It's going to be technically fault. his fault. Let me tell you, I absolutely love Pizzellas, too. Oh, yes. To go to Aldi and buy them, it's, cheap. it's easier. They're not that great at all, these, though. They're I kind of bland. This is neat. It's not Jason talking about how, how great they were, and I'm like, all right, I'll try these. And I'm like, man, these aren't that great. They're great. You just didn't get good ones. <laughs> well, I got from Aldi's. Oh. I don't okay. know what the Germans know about making pizzelles. So. Here's an Amiga monitor. That's part of the Amiga 1000 I have somewhere else that I'll find later. The Amiga stuff, you, you didn't pay that much for that either. You paid uh, 120 for everything, and that was uh, the whole system, including the monitor, the CPU, Floppy drive, keyboard, joystick, manuals, and software. So that was a pretty good deal. Yeah, it's like a five, six hundred dollar bill. Easy. Is that you monitor work. a couple hundred bucks by itself, right? Yeah, probably two. We played Pirates on my buddy's Amiga. That was our favorite, our favorite game. This is software from it. The Checker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
bunch of books. Nothing totally exciting. Oh, Amiga DOS. Yes. Provider. Every little bit helps. What is up next? Dun, dun, dun. I'm right there. An Eric lot, okay. I think this is the lot I spent the most money on. Yeah, these are all reproduction pictures. Yeah, I spent $47 on these, and they're all cards. We couldn't tell what they were, but there's approximately 150 of these different pictures, and they're all Allentown, PA stuff. Oh, those are cool. Like maybe from somebody that formerly worked at the newspaper or from the newspaper themselves, and they yeah. won awards and had them hanging on the wall or something. Yeah, they said it. What, what was it, Jason? It's this, they said they put it together as a display of Allentown history or something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it was a display inside a hospital. These are all Velcroed, and it was a giant collage on the wall of a hospital or something. From what I understand, that's cool. Wow, the Keystone Railroad Club, nineteen twelve. When everyone wore hats. When everybody used to actually dress up. Yeah. Oh, Easter toy line. That's neat. <laughs> I think those will be good. I, I mean, I don't know if, you know, 150 of them for, I've got basically 30 cents a piece into them. So. Yeah, there's a lot of these. I mean, like, there's several boxes. Those are so easy to list, though. That's the thing. Yeah, they're all the same city, right? You said they're all Allentown, PA? Yeah, they're all Allentown. That's what's nice about it. I don't have to do a whole lot of research on them. I mean, Allentown, PA will be featured in my uh, title, and it'll just be, you know, Allentown, PA, you know, photograph, whatever the photograph is. Uh, two board measures, nine by 11, yeah. and that's and use the same generic description over and over again. Yep. I, I'll be, I'll really be ta changing the title and changing the, uh, the top of the description, and that's it, and the price will be all the same. There you yeah, go. I'll, and I'll pro I'm going to try and probably get, I'll probably put them up for, I don't know, 20 bucks a piece, depending on subject matter, I guess. Right. Put them on sale, and then you know, you never know what they're going to be. Here's another box of Eric junk. I see my good thing on top. Eric junk. <laughs> this is the piece that I think is going to be worth the most money out of everything I bought. I was not what that noise was. I was listening to this bounce around in truck. Driving, I was like, "What the hell?" It, it looks like a pretty generic little uh, lunchbox, except for one piece yeah. on. Look, it did have the grip for the thermos. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing is, the one thing on here is that sticker right there. Well, it says Philadelphia, Bethlehem, and New England, and I see Bethlehem on a sticker. I think Bethlehem steel. Um, and I have sold other things in the past with just a simple sticker on it that should have went for twenty or thirty dollars. They'll go for two to three hundred dollars. Bethlehem Steel collectors are absolutely insane. And it turns out that this sticker, uh, from what they were told, Jason was this was the train line that went into the Bethlehem Steel plant. Oh no, nice. yeah, that, that's where the and New England comes from. That was the train. Yeah. So, what is it worth? I don't know. I I'm going to guess somewhere between two and three hundred dollars. Yep. Who knows? Philadelphia, Bethlehem, and New England Railroad. All right. This thing is awesome. Was Another there one, one, what is the like implant railroad? That's for killing mosquitoes. <laughs> you literally fill that thing full of. I don't know, some sort of liquid or something, and it vaporizes it to get to drive away mosquitoes. That's awesome. It says it says actually on the sticker fly killer. Flies. I'm sorry, flies, it's not man. Vaporizer. Guess I need to wash my hands after such this thing. Well, you didn't sound like you licked it or anything. That's awesome. Put unleaded gas in it and plug it in. See what happens. <laughs> I bought that too. I bought that because my daughter thought it was really cool. I'll probably it give really it cool. it's probably worth a little bit of money too. 
right. Now we got. Here's my vintage waffle makers. And, you, and I, I buy these because of the design. If you look at the design, these, these are 1930s, 1940s. Um, they still have some of that, some of that art deco look to them. So what yeah. is has, has that even been used? It's got a new sticker still on it. Yeah. New old stock. Electric appliances, Sun Chef. Not really sure what it is. It's a hot plate, I guess. No, that, it's a pizza maker. It's it's a if you pull off the bottom one, there's probably a, uh, a griddle underneath there that you flip around and use. Oh, okay. Um, but the top one's like for pancakes, and then you'd use it for uh, waffles. It says Sun Chief. Sorry. And I just dropped it. <laughs> Next, we got a super made cookware. I have no maybe a weird omelet maker. What does it say? It says super made cookware. Cook dash ware. What's it? Is it flat on the other side? It's, it's flat, flat on both sides, like you would put it on a stove. Super one more time. Made. Super made. M A I D or M A D E? M A I D. Oh. A double double pan. <laughs> double pan. <laughs> that didn't help. Um, hold on. Folded folding hinge flip. Okay, those people don't know what it is either. There's another one. Same thing. So I got two of those. Yep. It's an omelet slash fish pan. I mean, it's not the right shape for an omelet. I guess your omelet would be oval instead of half shape, but. Waffles. Waffle maker got a. Looks pretty clean. Dusty, I mean, but. Dusty, yeah. Not rusted or anything like that. I said, the thing that's going to hurt me is I don't have cord, not cords for all of them, so. Another pan. No, no. Let me put that down as a fish poacher, omelet maker, or something. <laughs> it's literally. Is that a poster? Dude. Look at the sprays on that thing. It kind of looks like a poster. It looks like it opens from the side there. Are those hinges? No, not really. Well, yeah. There we go. That's a little bit scary, actually. <laughs> yeah, this, this looks like, you know. But would that other piece fit on top of it? If you have a bigger one of these, you could probably roll your <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Wait a minute. Oh, maybe that piece that's next to it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That, that square it's piece. Maybe top of that. You know, the handles are very similar. Yeah, set it on top of there. There you go. Oh, I'd be willing to bet that's what that is. You probably have a, a like an egg poacher on the on the top, and then the bottom is a toaster. They have a sticker that says three fifteen, and it's on both of them. And like this is three fifteen. They call it a flat toaster. Flat toaster. In other words, they didn't know what it was either. Yeah, but I do know that old toasters bring decent money. It's all really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure those are all 1930s. Maybe on into the 40s. Yes. Judging. Maybe painting bills with that one. <laughs> Eric, you did rent a van, right? I have an SUV. Vans are too expensive right now. Ah. All right. Damn, this one's heavy. That's paper, probably, right? So, yeah. All right, what'd you get in this lot? Oh, that's All right, that's the electric nibbler. Yeah. That one. And it's got a turkey logo. That's so cool. That's right. You paid $70 for that lot. 
Yeah, this this machine alone, looks like, uh, it has some dyes in here, I believe. It's uh, like two fifty. Okay. Easy. The guy said it was serviced somewhat recently too. So that's awesome. That's for uh, for nibbling on sheet metal, right? Yeah. It's heavy. <laughs> Let's see what it weighs. Twenty six pounds. Good lord. Oh, almost as much as that inside computer I, I shipped. All right. Here we have a Wen Saturn kit. A red one. That's unusual. No, nah, I've seen these before. I don't think they're rare or anything. It's, I didn't say rare. I said unusual. You usually see the brown or the black. So, that's probably yeah. 30 bucks. Nah. Probably more like. 15. Really? You think so? Yeah. Uh, got another air compressing thing. I mean, what's forty five dollars for theirs? They're crazy. That's probably a pneumatic filter. The, yeah, exactly. And here's yeah. a pneumatic uh, stapler. Do it fast. Yep, that's a one clamp. It's a pretty deep clamp, though. One that's a, uh, that's actually that? a, uh, that's actually a um, is it a rivet gun? It's a sheet metal cutter. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty neat. Worth some money. Definitely. What brand is on the uh, uh, water filter? Compressed air filter regulator. I don't see a name. Oh, Sears. There we go. Okay. Sears finest. Sears is a rare buck. Got three staplers, all duo fast, pneumatic. Yep. Pneumatic screwdriver. This looks like a pneumatic wrench. Another one. <laughs> this is cool. Star Trek logo water sprinkler. But I, that's probably still probably thirty thirty five dollars. <laughs> Neat. Especially when you sell it that way. And here is another nibbler. This one's air. So you got a pneumatic one, you got an electric one. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I don't think this one's worth as much, but it's got to be at least a hundred something. It's Black and Decker, model four hundred and fifty. Look that one up. I don't really know. I wonder why this thing was so heavy. Let's see. Uh, yeah, about 140 bucks actually. We're wow. shipping. That's pretty much on the nose on that. Well done. What is this lot? All right, this is some more Amiga stuff. Just books and stuff. Okay. Cool. Cool. Here we go. We got the old 1950s Dust Buster. Isn't that supposed to be chrome, or is that really yeah. brown? It's dusty. Wow, look at all the dust on that thing. Spit on it and wipe your fingers. Down. Electric. Is it is it brown or chrome or what? The dust is so heavy, I can't tell. Wow. Perma dust. Yeah. Hmm. That's probably worth something. Who knows? 
Invisible Hinge Router Guide. Okay, so it's some sort of template guide for a router. I was, kind of, I was kind of half hoping the boxes open up and you could hear it, but you couldn't see it. Hmm. There's another Stanley. Is that a plunge router or just a regular? It's a. It's plunging, but not in the traditional sense. It's not like on. Yeah. Modern plunge routers are on. on like yeah, down, and this is like you turn. To, for your height, that's why this is. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. Right. Yeah, this is more of an adjustable than really a plunge. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not really considered a plunge router. I like that one. That's cute. All right, then we got what looks to be a laminate trimmer. And those are what's good. Those are 40, 50 bucks at least. Yeah, this one's a port of cable, so it's good, and it's got yeah. It's got all the right part there, so cool. And then we have a cuddle. What is that? This is a pretty rare tool. It's, I forget what industry it's used for. It's like a, it's a specialty uh, jigsaw that you hold from the front. And you go forward, and you make intricate patterns and stuff. Huh. You know, used it's used in a lot of different applications, but there is a, a set in the general. I haven't had one of these in years. These are usually at least a hundred bucks. Oh, it's a pattern maker scroll saw. Is that a K11? What? Is that a K11? Yes, it is. Uh, between two fifty or between two hundred and three and a quarter. Oh, okay. Stop, stop. <laughs> I just, Dang. I just knew it was good. <laughs> you had to say, you stepped up on that one, if I remember correctly. I think I paid seventy, but it was for the whole lot. There's the routers. Or, there was other stuff in it. Let me find that lot. Like I said, I've only had like one. I think of those in the past. But I knew yeah, it was seventy dollars for it. So that thing's going to triple your money on that one lot and that one piece, and everything else is going to go in there. That's probably a four, four to five hundred dollar lot then. Well, not with what you just saw. I don't know what was else. These are kind of mixed up, so I don't know what else was in that. We well, had to, in that one. You had the uh, Porter cable laminate trimmer and the Stanley router and the pad sander. And what sander? Some sort of pad sander. Well, at least it's a hundred bucks more. Another pneumatic. Old school craftsman drill. That's a craftsman. This is the little circular saw that those battery and charge ah, yeah, the Makita. Yeah, okay. the old... You can test the uh, batteries and everything and all that. So. You know what's really sad is I actually used that style of battery with Makita stuff up until about ten, eight, 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 nine years ago. Probably. I was the same way. That's what I, I had Makita stuff and it was all using that, that thin battery. I love that stuff. 9.6 volt, I think. Yeah, it is a 9.6, yep. <laughs> That's funny. But it was Makita, so it was actually it was actually a pretty decent one. That was really my first experience with uh, battery operated uh, um, power tools like that. Everything else had been that. And then I had the, the Black and Decker Versa system, which that was a terrible system. Yeah, the Makita, the guy I used to buy a lot of car parts and stuff from, he'd also go around to pawn shops and buy up all their, you know, hey, what do you want to get rid of in the tool section? Put it all in a pile and make me a really cheap, you know, deal or whatever. He had so many pieces of Makita, and he'd sell stuff to me for like ten dollars a piece or whatever. Batteries were like ten dollars. Charger was five bucks or, or whatever. And I ended up with a lot of nice tools, but doubt the batteries would hold the charge anymore if I still had them. Here's some more of the photos. I was working on an airplane. That's cool. Lamp, lamp post waiting to be installed. Neat. Eighteen ninety nine. 
This is a little more modern stuff. Late earlies are, he said 9.6. Crazy cards at 9.6 volt. That's like late earlies, early 90s. It was, well, yeah, I was, I was using that in uh, 92, in late, late 90s, up until 2010. I think Eric still has one of these in his garage. I wish. A horse or a man with a hat? <laughs> Bethlehem Steel's 1911 Clam Bake Band. The Clam Bake Band. <laughs> yes. Like I said, there's, there's enough interesting subject matter that people are going to want to buy it. So. Oh, it's all yeah. awesome stuff. I'd have been all over it, too, just because, like you said, the ease of listing it plus the subject matter. This is interesting. An Allentown High School teacher christened the USS Allentown frigate. Oh, neat. That's frigate, frigate and cool. Well, this one's not labeled, but it's a uh, like a general store. That's cool, isn't it? Those are some of the best. Old general store images just sell really well. Yeah. Which is great for me because my parents, I actually have photos of my parents' general store back in the uh, 1940s. So that's kind of neat. That'd be really cool. I'm right. right, glad I bought that. A lot's going to be just fun to go through. Cigar manufacturer. Oh, okay, now that one's probably not even going to get sold. That'll probably go on my wall. What's so. the two random people you just put in there? Huh? Who are the random people you just grabbed? The, the last two people. Oh, they were uh, news reporters. They were news reporters for uh, there. Diane and Bill reporting live from WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't buy any of this junk that's out there, people. Keep buying uh, your your cheap stuff and your clothes and all that stuff. We'll buy all this stuff. Oh, Eric! I know I'm bash on clothing sellers. I'm not meaning to, but I do. It's more fun. Beth's gonna get you. Beth's right there. I know. That's why I was talking to her. Oh. <laughs> Beth's not a uh, not an exclusive clothing seller. She sells a lot of stuff though. Oh. Elu router. This is by um, it's Swiss made, and then Dewalt bought them, if I remember right. Oh, that's right. We look. DeWalt, you can still get parts for these. This one's not working apparently. Half inch. It says needs repair on the top. So. Yeah, it's ninety to hundred bucks if it was in working condition. Mm. A bottle of. Modern cut lube. Modern cut what? The nibblers. There you go. What yeah, is okay. it? Cool tool, or it's it's uh just it's the stuff you you spray on when you're cutting. I was, trying to, get I was trying to get Jason to say lube, okay. but that was better than to answer my questions. Here's all the paperwork for the nibblers and the original receipts. I think I hear he said. Oh, that's cool. All are you going to sell those with the paperwork, or are you going to sell the paperwork separately? I'll probably sell it with it. Oh, here come the tornadoes. All right. If Dusty blows away, we'll still be here. No, we got another hour till it hits here. I'm watching, I'm doing multi screen watching the radar. Gas mask right in the garbage. Not you you got to put it on your face a couple times first before you do that. So. You know, for dust protection. Yeah. There's probably more dust on the inside than there is on the outside. That's a proper router, router base. So. Yeah. Looks like a port cable. Oh, Bosch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this is. Black & Decker Guide Mate. Uh, looks like it holds. That's for a drill. Okay. Not worth, that's not worth anything. A stack of uh, painters uh, masks. This is kind of neat. It's another router, but it's pneumatic. Is that the is that the same base? Rock, Rockwell. Okay. Neat. We got a bunch of scrap metal. Yeah, 
Oh, this is flat steel. Machine is still. It has a tinsel rate rating on it. So that's cool. Um, there's some of these like weird electronics. There. It's like a power supply, maybe. What is that? Model what? Oh, Re that's your bunker, that's your bunker burner lot. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Oh, this has Bethlehem steel on it. That's one of your lots. Yeah. That's a good one. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. You can put a wipe out if you want. I, I, know I mean, I know you hate selling gauges and everything, so. Yeah. What did I pay for this lot? You paid for that lot four dollars. Another amp gauge. Ooh, that one like in his hand right there. That's the one I bought like 70 of them. And I do good. I've sold another one the other day. Another little one. Another one. Now I bought this lot for this one item. It's an antique um it's crap in the way. Antique Bunsen burner. Yeah, antique Bunsen burner. Okay. Remember the one I had recently? That, one, that was somewhere between fifty oh. and two hundred. That's another one. I sold one just like that one for about forty bucks. So I mean you spent four dollars, you you've got somewhere, I'm gonna guess about five hundred dollars worth of stuff there. There's also sinker pack. But there's also these pieces. I don't know what they are. If anyone knows. Huh. There's a couple of them back there. This one just has a number on it. I do not know. And there's a whole bunch of different. There's a bunch of these. They're all different, like little pieces. Those look like tips, like burner tips. Yeah, they do. Um, but they don't go to your. We'll they go in the... Anything with a cone shape. Hmm. The big metal thing that you don't know what it is? I don't remember. You haven't got there yet. I'll tell you. When, when you grab it, I'll tell you. Right. Okay, that one right there. That, the big one in your hand. Yeah. The very Okay. The one in your left hand and between your fingers, that one. Does it look like those tips would go on the end of that? That looks like a, like a squeeze-down type thing. No. This actually looks like it holds a collet. It's grooved on the inner. There's an inner ring. Yeah, oh, in fact, the collet's in here. Yeah, so this is holding a collet at this end. Interesting. Might be part of like a CNC machine or something like that. Yeah, it could be. Oh, play with it. It's always fun trying to find what things are. They look nicely made, though, so. Amount of money in that box, then. Yeah, this Bethlehem steel gauge is awesome. Quite interested in what that'll go for. I'm I'm going to guess you over a hundred dollars on that one. What's it reading? Ever hear that? I can't. Mills deviation. So it's probably part of a uh, part of part of the uh, something that's measuring um, like a diameter or something. And that's there's a standard deviation built into it. Put that in the breakables. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, like an assembly line where it came down through, and they had you know check for deviation on individual little part. You know what I mean? They can yeah, that's what I was, I'm thinking. And that little gauge is just a quick, yeah. you know, something the guy can just keep glancing at. Yep. 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 <sighs> Okay, it's never light. That's what irons. There's a big sander. Oh, that's probably the pad sander they were talking about in that one lot. 
uh, Black Endeavor, Decker, Heavy Duty, Orbital. Number CNC is computer numerical controlled, and it's usually a cutting tool. It's in a it's in a big cabinet, and it uh, it actually the the head doesn't move typically. It's the table moves, um, and it's all it's all done programming by computer. That's why they do it so that you can actually cut big pieces out of out of a flat sheet steel. Part of my four or five dollar lot there, so that's an odd thing, though. What is that? Like three mini waffles? It's one giant waffle in my books. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Peanut butter and walnuts. That's the only way to make a waffle. Uh, what is that? I can't see it. I don't know. I don't cook. How can you not see it? I got the screen. Yeah. I thought it was coiled and it turned out because oh, yours grainy on my screen for some reason. That's an antique computer you're using. <laughs> you're really saying it because we, we, Dusty and I have the exact same computer. <laughs> there you go. Those don't even look like they've ever been used. I wonder if these were like in a shop for like sales and samples. You better or... remember, this is all out of a woodworker's cabinet shop or furniture shop, right, actually. So everything has a layer of just like wood dust and it smells like cherry. Yeah. That is an antique according to Bath is a antique. The thing you held up is an antique heat, heat diffuser. Oh, okay. This one's this one's definitely used. Okay, yeah, but you see the difference. That one's kind of cool because the it's got the red light on it. I mean that's a neat one. <laughs> I don't I'm gonna do, do really well on those. For dispersing heat evenly on a gas or electric cooktop. Uh, it just comes up through all the little holes instead of in a couple of places. Another toaster? Just the one piece. Does it does it oh that's probably what the heat diffuser goes to. And that said woodworkers love waffles, it seems. <laughs> I love waffles, I can tell you that. <laughs> Guy liked his tools and his waffles. That's what we should have named it. <laughs> the Tool and Waffle Show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, for every, I mean, you've seen, I mean, I don't know how many, what, what are we up to, 12 or 13 of these things? And I have like $13 into all of them. Was it even that? Yeah, it was 13 I added up. It was five, three, three, and two. I mean. <laughs> no, were they in lots, the waffles? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were all in lots. They were, I didn't buy them individually. It was four, three, Three, four, five, six. There were six in that one, four in that one, three in that one. So that's six, ten, thirteen, and then uh, three more pieces. So I got sixteen pieces for thirteen dollars. I like buying in big, huge lots. Obviously, as you can tell, my back stock. But yes, because again, you sell one or two pieces, and, and it just pays for itself. And all day. That's huge. Oh, yeah. Businesses yeah. buying in bulk and not running all over. Yeah. When, when you have the opportunity. Right. Yep. What is that? Allen Air Corp. I've seen that before. It's an air ram of some, I think. These are all air parts. Those are interesting. Some of these can be pricey. Yeah. Bellows air motor. Okay, that's an air. Yeah, that actually is going to be really pricey. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. There's a shaft. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think some of this pneumatic stuff is actually going to turn out to be really good. It's another air motor. Yeah. Bimba. Bimba MFG. <laughs> I saw some Bimba stuff a while back. Bimba's good. This reminds me a lot of that Chrysler engineer stuff. Really There's no this, is, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you have no idea what it's going to be used for. You don't really care. You throw it up, and the, and the guy who's looking for this has been looking for it for a long time. Yeah, I guarantee you knew these, these things are very expensive. You sold something Bimba on August 4th of 2015. 
and that oh, yeah. time, it was a lot of bimba pneumatic air cylinder flat one rotary actuator and more and i got 70 bucks for the lot and i really don't recall how many pieces were in it probably just a couple of little bimba pieces quick connector studs yeah those are cheap all right so this is the pier is the foot pedal for that machine earlier on that ah okay that sure cut cutter yeah now there are also two other pedals all right those would be good yeah. this one's cast iron now it looks for something like where you'd want to, your foot to be protected or yeah, like on a break or a press yeah. or something like that yeah I bought this lot just for that pedal. I think I paid like seven bucks, right? Let's see. The pedal lot you paid nine dollars for. Right. My bad. Sorry. I think my eBay door just turned blue or something. I haven't sold anything, hardly anything all day, and then I got what three or four back to back. Uh, I've had oh, a couple sales. Set a sale too, so. I have a couple sales, but they've been decent prices. So. This is full to the brim of Eric's pictures. Uh -oh. Yeah, make sure you get your dirty hands all over. Like, this is like the Wrath of Grace. <laughs> cool. Construction of the 8th Street Bridge, world's largest concrete bridge at the time in 1912. Back on the form. I don't know, nice tractor picture. That'll work. Were the people not to were the people on that farm picture, were they all black? I couldn't tell. Actually, Jason, you, you keep that picture right there. Yeah. And smell it with your with your uh, your hat thing. Because that's yeah. what that goes to. So that that's actually the shop. When we did some research, that's the shop. It was known as the polar bear shop in Allentown because they had a stuffed polar bear out front. And so or the white bear shop actually is what it says, but yeah, that's that. So that's going to, we're going to put that with that conformerator thing. We knew that was in there. So that'll help the value of that too. Another bridge. Anybody's interested in history, especially if they, they own property around there or, you know, they, you know, they're a big fan of their town. I mean, that's that's the best stuff. Images, you know, I got a bunch of uh, real photo postcards I, I bought recently, and they're, you know, the slice of life type stuff. The images of buildings that aren't there are the ones that are worth the most. This, the hat shop was on this block. Okay, cool. Here's an airplane. Oh, this is interesting. Groundbreaking for Center Square in 1911. That's cool. Yeah, Shank Wilder. That's see, that's neat. When you got the shop names in the back. Yeah. They're just bigger than I thought. <laughs> that's all. Hmm. I was thinking they were maybe postcard size. When... Yeah, I thought they were postcards too. <laughs> well, I won't go crazy with all the take them out of here and everything. That's good enough, right, Eric? Yeah, that's fine. Right. I'll see him next week. Anna Walt. White Bear Store, Anna Walt Brothers. Yep, that's who it was. Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was trying to look up the history on it. 1869 is when he opened his first ship store, and he was closed by 1891. And the patent date on that thing was 1869. Yeah. 1868. So it was like it was patented before he even opened the shop. Last but not least. <laughs> Has to be the Amiga. Yep. We got the keyboard. Cool. The little Amiga check. Love that. More paperwork. Stuff. Here's a on that, Eric. Extremely dusty Amiga, which I will clean up. 
Some more books. Yeah, yeah, we looked at that. Epic joystick. These are cool. There's two joysticks. And then we got the disc, an extra disc drive. And the disc drive, I believe this is the box for it. Oh, that's even nicer. Yeah. So you said that was worth what? About $400, everything there? Well, it, it varies. If I decide to sell it all together with the monitor, you're looking at six to seven ish. Okay. It all depends on if there's any accessories inside or not. I got to open it up and look. So, I mean, out of everything here, we're looking at maybe for, for everything you bought, one or two lots is going to pay for everything. You look yeah. at the Amiga lot and, and the hat conformerator as being the two most expensive pieces for value, what they're worth. Not what you paid, but what, what they're worth. You're looking at probably thirteen to $1,400, which gets you your money back relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, These are all and everything else just becomes bread and butter at that point. That's your profit. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I'm looking at, I spent $130 and I'm almost positive that that Bethlehem piece is going to go for over 200 and I'm getting all my money back in one piece. Yeah. So what's neat about the, uh, this Amiga 1000 is um, if you open it up on the inside top cover is the signatures of all the designers and stuff. Oh, that's cool. And including the the dog that was in the shop. I think he was owned by the lead guy, if I remember right. He has his little <laughs> paw print. <laughs> it's pretty cute. All right, so you'll have like all my wolf makers all cleaned up for me next week, is what you're Oh yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna be doing Friday, I'll be dusting things off. Just <laughs> I don't want to put them in in my rental. I mean it's all from your waffle makers, not even the tools. <laughs> it's all your fault. I mean, well, yeah, that was depression era, so maybe they were making like sawdust waffle makers and stuff. I mean, you know, sawdust, sawdust waffles and all. I don't know. I mean, like I said before, that stuff had like, there were 800 lots to that auction. It was, it was went relatively quickly. An 800 lot auction, you usually see it takes three or four hours. That one was done within about two. Man, yeah, it was fast. I was expecting to be there quite a long time, and you know, on the computer. Yeah. Hawk nine ninety nine nine, whatever his name is. Hawk with a lot of numbers after his name. Question on the Amiga: If you aren't smart enough to test them, how much are they worth untested? Hmm. I mean, if it powers on, yeah, you can at least check to see if it powers on. Because I sold a the Apple three, I sold for seven hundred dollars, and it powered on, but it wasn't even fu fully working so if it, if it had been working it was about a thousand so maybe you lose about a third of the value if you can't sit there and say yes it works definitely you know the nice thing is you have all the pieces you just have to hook them all together and then turn it on and run and see what happens i mean yeah i actually in my collection i have a, like a pristine amigo just like this a 1000 and um so i know how to check it and everything but yeah if you didn't i mean at least the power light comes on and usually you'll get us like the drive will spin up that's another important thing yeah if you can hear the drive spin actually if you hook the monitor to it and um you'll see information and you and you fire it up one time make sure it's all nice and clean you turn stuff like that on when the monitor comes up you take a picture of it and you never turn it on again yeah well the thing with the amiga is that there's no um there's no operating system in it for this early one so you would have to use like an amiga boot disk it's yeah but you're, you're gonna get it you're gonna get an error message when it pops up saying no op system or something yeah. along those lines you yeah. take a picture of that and that tells people that basically the board is working the video is working um when it whatever the message is it comes out and then you just say hey i don't have an operating system the most important thing to do is open the inside cover and look over the capacitors and make sure none of them are leaking you don't have to worry about batteries on this model. This didn't have a battery, a BIOS battery. Other Amiga models, the batteries are notorious for leaking all over the board. In that case, you don't want to turn it on either if you see that. Yeah. So inspect the board first is number one. And just flip it open to see if you see rust and corrosion on it. 
And either way, even if it is bad, you could it still has resale value. There's lots of people that restore these, you know. I, you know, I collect computers that can repair these. It's not, you know, if you're into it, you don't mind doing it. It just fetches a little bit less money, but it's still a sellable item now I'm working. Damn it. That means you gotta ship some more tomorrow. Offer of $120 for another set of those NASA documents. So that means I've sold one little stack of NASA documents for a hundred, another little stack for 120. And I probably have 30 stacks like that. And you paid like ten dollars for all I of them. Paid like I think I offered her ten dollars for the two boxes. <laughs> I think, I think so. It's, but you know, it was paper in a garage underneath a workbench full of crap, and I'm like, "What's in the big file, three foot long file boxes?" And I said, "Oh, it's old papers and stuff from your dad. Must have been from his, you know, his job with NASA or whatever." I said, "Would you get rid of those?" And she goes, "Yeah, I don't want them. That'd be glad. That clears up some space." And that's the kind of stuff. Like what y'all were showing them. We were talking about that earlier today, the three of us, and it's just or two of the three of us, I don't remember, but you know, it's just the stuff that people overlook. Yeah. It's the stuff that, you know, I, I've heard it for a long time on YouTube with comments. Thanks for doing these kind of videos, Jason or Eric or Dusty or whatever, because you opened my eyes to stuff that I hadn't didn't have any idea that there was any value in. Don't be afraid to get into stuff you don't know anything about because it's not really hard to research, you know. If it's got a part number and a name on it, you can look it up on eBay or Google. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And if you if, it, if you can't find it anywhere, then you probably got a decent item. You gotta you just gotta figure out what to call it. Yeah, very rarely do we get stuff that we just can't flat out figure out. Yeah. Um, there is one item that I would like to share because maybe someone out there. Oh, that's true. The Crosby item. <laughs> now that we're on the subject, let me just grab it. It's a screen on your valve. I think I can put space here up for the year now. Yeah, I should probably. I'm still sitting underneath my desk, so. <laughs> Mine's still sitting underneath my desk. I right, keep tripping over the cord. I have had this sitting on the shelf for well over a year because I still don't know what the heck it is. Have I seen this thing before? Yes. I know, even the great Eric Weber doesn't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that now. What? Hold on. Oh, wait, let me keep it on my screen. Oh, no, did we, we? We figured this out. I thought. No, we never figured this out. I've never. I it's something to do with. Um, it's a camera device. I don't think so. It's. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a projector. It's, what it, it's a projecting device. Where is it projecting? I I've heard it's what? something to do with film or camera, but. It, this piece almost looks, I don't know. I think there's a lens that's supposed to go on the front there. Eh, I don't think so. Did you undo that wing nut at the very yeah. top? Wait, 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 wait. You know what? This centerpiece here, you can see the little lines. It expands. Yeah, it, it's a, it's like a, it's like a, what do you call it? On the inside of a lens, the uh, aperture it, adjustments. So I, I can't get it to open per se. Right. It's probably the, the side, one of the side views or something like that. I mean, yeah, let me play with some of the knobs a second. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like a soft plastic. I can move it in and out a little. Oh, so there probably is a lens there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the wing nut on the on the top there. I'm sitting there pointing like you like I'm pointing at it like come on, Jason, open that wing nut thing right there. Yeah, that uh, one. Yeah, that one right there. So loosen that up and see what happens. It's gonna take it off. All, all that all that is is a pipe clamp that's holding this the box on to the base. Well take the box off. Oh open the top. Is does the top open up? I've never seen this. I don't remember him ever. Oh this, it opens from the side. All right. And is there a, There's bulb? a bulb in there? There's a bulb in there. It is a projector. What kind of projector? I couldn't find anything like this. Probably a slide projector. It's probably 1930s. Oh, wait. There is a hole up here where you could slide something. No, I don't think that's where – that should be uh, air holes because that bowl would get oh, – sure, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's one giant hole. Like that's, that sounded wrong. It, <laughs> it's like two inches in diameter. Well, let me see. I can't – what are you pointing you can't at? can't because it's, it's, this covers over it. It underneath this cover is like a two inch diameter. Circle. That's what I'm saying is that then it comes out the top there, it vents out the top. That's probably for heat. 
Well, then where would the slide go? The slide would go in front. Uh, it would where the lens would attach. More than likely, there's a piece that goes there that the the lens goes on, and then the the slide goes in between it. Hmm. What you have three different knobs there to adjust. Yeah, I don't know what they do. They're just. I don't know. I can't. Nothing visible from. Oh wait, hold on. I don't really see anything. Vi oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, they're moving this in and out. Hold on. Let's see if I can get that better. They're moving this inside flange in and out. Yeah, which is focusing now. Okay. So that's a focus. All right. I still don't know where you're putting the slide, though. Unless well, I think there's a piece that you're missing, I think. You're missing part of the lens. The lens itself, I mean, when you have a like a lens, I just happen to be listing lenses. So you have a lens that would go on the front, and there's probably a piece that, that's, that's open that you just drop the slide down into. Hmm. All right. That's pretty close. That's on Etsy, though. That didn't really help a whole lot. All right. Well, at least uh, it's one step closer to moving. I thought we'd figured out it was some sort of projector. but That would be antique projector, question mark. What is it? Something. Throw it up there and just let it rip. But I'm, I'm a little looser. You don't think it's for magic? the Magic Lantern kind of? It might be. It might be like an updated Magic Lantern type system where you would attach like the older Magic Lantern to the uh, front of it. I don't know. That, that, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, though. It's. I still um, think there's. Does he? Does it, he said? Is there bellows on there? Does it pull out, or that's what we don't know? Well, it it yeah. adjusts in and out. On the inside there, so there isn't there is a focusing beam in there or something to do with it. So all right. Well so, interesting stuff. Yeah. Cool. I guess we're pretty much done here for the night. I want to get home. It's already 8 30. Yep. Almost. Magic Lantern is like an 1890s to nineteen ten slide projector. Just go, just go to eBay and look up Magic Lantern. You'll see what we're talking about. It uses a, a glass slides and everything. So, all right. Well, cool. thanks uh, for watching, everyone. Um, see you next time. Yep. Probably next week. I'll be up with Jason. We'll probably do a video or something while we're together. Oh, great! You gonna buy me lunch too? No, wait, 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 wait. wait. I'll, I'll make Jason the star of my my video taking hat. Oh God! Please tell me you're not gonna wear that around me. <laughs> what hat was it? I missed it. You didn't see that? My video taking hat. Oh. Well, they use it the flea for taking the video at the flea market. You can point the camera straight down. Oh, we're still alive. I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She yeah, looked like an amazing dork I'll, wearing the hat. I'll but... start at the other end of the flea market. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. Have a good night. Yep. See y'all. Peace. Bye.